Hello and welcome back to my channel. In this week's video I will be showing you my new Minimal. It has a lot of awesome features and I will show you all of them in this video. So now let's get into it. I obviously had to somehow lift it up on its mount. So I installed a very sketchy ratchet on the, in, on the roof of my workshop and then lifted it up in multiple steps, which was uh, very sketchy, but uh, I got it to work at the end. We also bought the vise for the mill, which is way too big, <laughs> but we only realized when we actually put it on the machine, it uses up a lot of the set space on the set, uh, or set travel on the machine, which is quite valuable because it doesn't have a lot of it. So with a tool holder in there, you have about uh, 15 centimeters of travel left. And if you put the drill chuck in there, you really run out of space um, right there. So we have to we will have to buy a short drill chuck. But for the axis, on the X and the Y axis, there are ball screws. That means you can climb cut on this machine, which uh, gives you quite uh, awesome possibilities of uh, milling. It gives you great surface finish and a great tool life. It has a big white dovetails on both, on all three axes, on the X and the Y especially. The ZX has also a, a great dovetail, big one. Um, and you can really see that uh, there are also covers on, on uh, all the exposed screws. Um, and there is a, for the gib, there's a, one of these screw adjustments in the front, so you don't have to uh, screw it in from the side like on the, on the mini lathe. It has a swivel head that allows you to tilt the head uh, 90 degrees in both directions if you want that. It has a quill with 50 millimeters of travel, that's great for drilling. That has a, a digital readout um, on the front and the fine adjust, so you can uh, really finely adjust the, the depth for milling. The hand wheel for the set axis on the side of the mill, so you can easily reach it for uh, adjusting the set height. So I can actually use the machine. I also had to buy some collets for the bigger tool holders. They are ER32. I also bought this MK2 to SK30 adapter, the spindless SK30. Then I uh, bought two of these ER32 to SK30 adapters and the wrench for them. The machine has a built-in VFD. This allows you to seamlessly vary the RPM in a quite big range. Then you also have a slow and a fast uh, setting uh, gearbox. So you can really, uh, for the low speed, you can just put it in turtle mode and then you have a lot of torque for drilling or something like that. It also has a DRO, which is awesome. You can see that uh, it's one for X, Y, and Z. You could also add in a, a, fourth, a fourth one, but uh, it doesn't need that, obviously, because it doesn't have four axes, but you could. Um, then it has features like this, where you can put in like the angle and the radius, and then it gives you the coordinates. And this is obviously something very important, this peel. And now, I put the device on the machine and aligned it quickly, which uh, was pretty easy because the machine runs pretty straight. <laughs> so it, uh, it wasn't uh, like hard to do. And uh, then the first cuts I took on the machine were just in aluminum and also pretty uh, slow. So now let's make an actual part or actual parts. Uh, it's more accurate. Um, I'm using a full carbide um, 11 millimeters uh, end mill that uh, I got <laughs> somewhere. I don't, I don't really remember uh, where I got it from. Um, but it's it's already used, but it still works uh, perfectly fine for, for this. Here I am milling down the height or the width of the part. 
I will be making two parts out of this. Um, I need to mill it down to 16 millimeters. The part was about 20 millimeters thick. So I will just be taking a few uh, passes right here. I uh, obviously had to measure um, at least once, but uh, I, I measured a few times here to be sure that it's uh, it will be accurate. I also got the, out the, the micrometer, and you can see I'm almost there. Got three um, hundredths of a millimeter that I need to go. So now I can adjust on the on the fine adjust. I'm still not. Uh, worked in this machine so I turned it the wrong way but uh, it wasn't a problem And as you can see, I hit that pretty well. It's within uh, half a hundredth of a millimeter, so that would be um, two thou. No, no, that would be two ten thou of, uh, of an inch. And now uh, <laughs> I put it in on the other side because now we have to uh, drill uh, some holes. I just used the drill to, to touch off on the side, obviously it's not very accurate, but uh, for this it was accurate enough, because that uh, dimension doesn't really matter. And I will have to get uh, some kind of uh, probe to touch off on the sides. I don't know what I should uh, should use for that. If you have an idea, you can uh, write that in the comments. And now I switch to the 10 millimeter uh, end mill for the counters, uh, count pull for the, for the screw head. Um, I touched off on the top and then I went down 6.5 millimeters because it's a M6 bolt and the head of an M6 bolt is 6 millimeters high. So a bit more than that so it uh, wouldn't stick out in the top and then on the second one I could just uh, go to the same depth I didn't have to touch on top and after that I cut off the two parts from each other and now we're just gonna mill down uh, the rest of this aluminum until uh, it's equal on both sides and well, <laughs> somebody did Somebody forgot to uh, turn on the camera when doing this, so here I am reenacting what I did. I basically just uh, mounted both of them in the ends of the vise, so the vise wouldn't clamp uh, crooked. And then I just milled down in for back and forth passes until uh, I was at size. And I think the surface came out really nice. And um, that's the part. If you're interested for what these parts are, then you should uh, subscribe for next week's video. And with that, thank you for watching until next week, hopefully. <laughs>